Welcome to episode number 22. My name is Harvey Newman and I like to share my passion for animation here in this channel with all of you. So today we are going to be talking about the graph editor. The graph editor is something that uh, it's very complex to grasp, especially for new upcoming animators. It looks like a spaghetti of just confusion. In this episode, more than explaining what a graph editor is, as I assume that most of you guys know, I'm just gonna give you guys some tips and tricks that I've learned throughout the years, some hotkeys, some tools that you can use. I'm a huge fan of the graph editor now, but I used to hate it back in the day. Uh, I think all of you will eventually love it. You just need to actually have a few things at your disposal that will make your life easier. So let me show you some of that stuff in this episode number 22. So before we get started, I would like to take a few moments to just acknowledge how much I appreciate you guys finding value in this channel, some of the comments that you guys drop, some of the love that I've been getting both on social media and also in the channel itself in the comments. I thought it's only right for me to start showcasing some of that love that I've been receiving with the rest of the community. So hopefully you guys get to see and feel more at will to maybe drop a comment and kind of express yourself in this channel, ask questions. So in every video of every week, I will select one or two comments down below. So the first comment that I would like to highlight was by the user Kroll. She actually commented on the video with JD and myself talking. She basically said that it was great to see two humble animators talking about animation and she felt very inspired by it. I really appreciate the comment. I'm glad that you found some value on this. The second comment that I would like to highlight is by Wynn. Wynn has been with the channel from the get-go and on the last episode he had said that uh, having me interview JD just highlighted that we were both two of his favorite animators and I really appreciate that Wynn. If you actually would like to have your comment highlighted in these videos then either drop a comment or a, like, a question about animation and I'll make sure to get to it on the next episode. So with all of that being said Let's start this episode. I would love to actually break down the graph editor for you guys here in this video, but I think the video is not long enough. If you guys are interested in me breaking down the graph editor from the very basics, please let me know and I'll create another video specifically for the graph editor and its basics. For the time being, I will link down below an article by this animator called Victor Nabone. Um, he's an animator at Pixar and way back in the day when I was still learning animation he wrote this excellent article called Splinophobia where he breaks down the graph editor very very well why he loves it and how you should be working with the graph editor to start with. You guys should definitely have a read at the article. It will give you guys a, a very nice overview of what the graph editor is and how you should be working with it to start with. The very basics of the graph editor. This video is more for people that are already working with a graph editor and want perhaps a better workflow, a few tips and tricks on how to work with a graph editor a little better. And that's what we're gonna do next. So the first thing that I'm gonna break down for you guys, it's gonna be hotkeys. Because there's nothing more frustrating than having to move your mouse every time that you actually want to set a key or you want to delete a key or you want to shift your keys back and forth that stuff gets really annoying and is one of the things that put me off from the graph editor the most so i'm going to show you some of the hotkeys that i use all the time and i hope that it will help you guys just as much as it has helped me i'll just remind you one last time that i'm doing this on the corner of the screen so you guys can see that i'm doing it here with you guys um, and i'm not skipping anything um, let's start with these hotkeys then this is an animation that I did, part of the video uh, I did right at the beginning when I started the channel, which was called Animating the Rock. Show you guys how I use uh, GIFs as a source of a reference, which I think is very valuable. So if you haven't watched that video, feel free to actually go back and watch that video. And I'm going to use this animation as an example of what I'm trying to show you here with this graph editor. I'm going to keep it super simple and I'm going to show you the two keys that I use the most. Anything that you repeat many many times if you have to do it all the time then it's very wise for you to stop repeating that movement all the time and just put it 
in a hotkey because it will save you time because the only thing you have to do is press the hotkey in order for this to happen. The thing that you do definitely the most in the graph editor is moving keys about in order to kind of get better shapes. But the second thing that you perhaps do the most is deleting keys or adding keys. So what I've done is actually created a simple short key in order to delete the keys. So right next to my back and forth keys, I have V, which then allows me to delete keys as I want. So if I actually go to here, or there, I can just delete keys at will. Obviously the natural evolution from that is to add keys. So next to the V key, I have the N key, and that is basically to add keys. So this adding keys, it's actually very interesting. If you have a curve selected, wherever you are in time, if you press add key, you will just add the key to that one curve. But if you have no curve selected, and you actually wanna add a key to like here, for example, it will add the key to not only this curve, but it will add it to all the curves that you have selected. So now that we spoke about delete and add, let me talk about this one more uh, hotkey that I use all the time, and that is a smoothing tangents. Uh, sometimes you want to actually just select all and just kind of a go like auto tangent, either does it all, but sometimes you actually want to do it in sections. If I just press B, I get my tangent. Uh, looking smooth and looking nice and I can just go through anything else that I actually want and just quickly smooth my tangent key by key if I want like if I just want to smooth that key to see what I got I can actually do this and go back if I need to so that is basically the hot keys that I use add keys delete keys and smooth tangents <laughs> Plugins are super incredibly useful when it comes to the graph editor. They will make your workflow better. They'll streamline it. They will enhance it. Here are some of the plugins that I have been using for the last few years, and they have been invaluable in my workflow. They are so useful that some of them, you kind of wonder how comes Autodesk is not using some of this as its native Maya functions. So let me show you some of that. first script that I would like to show you guys is perhaps the one that I use the most. That is uh, MG Tools. I would like to actually one day make a full video about MG Tools. I'm waiting for Miguel, which is the creator of MG Tools, to actually kind of get back to me. It looks like this once you install it, uh, it has loads of tools and this MG Tools was perfect for me when I actually was working freelance because it's basically an animation a pipeline by itself. It's incredibly useful, incredibly diverse, and very, very, very powerful. But the thing that I use MG Tools for the most, they have this thing, once you install MG Tools, that if you go into Tools Configuration, you can go into the Graph Editor plugin, and if you go Auto Load uh, GE plugin, as you can see here, if you pay attention to this side here, you'll load up this section in here on the bottom as well. Basically what this does is give you these tools and these tools just are shortcuts to certain things that you normally do all the time. So let's take the tool from left to right, top to bottom. So if you actually go uh, on the left, if you want to select different channels, you have to constantly drag down and select different channels. And sometimes you just want one of each, sometimes you don't. What this tool does is basically allow you to go through every single channel just by clicking this button. So you can go X, Y, Z, and then all. At first, it doesn't really seem very useful, but believe me, when you have many, many controllers, when you're having loads of characters with different controllers, and you have loads to choose from, doing this all the time, or even going to the channel box and having to do this, because it does the same thing, it's actually very, time consuming. So you have it uh, for translations, rotations, and also scale. And then the tool that I use the most after that, it's actually reset. Reset basically gets all the keys and puts it at zero. This is per channel. You just select the keys, you click the button, and you reset it back to zero. You are saving about three different clicks. So this is a line keys. So let me explain to you how I use that. If I want to actually kind of keep this motion static on this axis. If I have to do it manually, I would have to actually kind of go in and just get the keys to be all aligned like this. Then you get something that looks like as you want to. Now, in order for you to not having to do this in every single key and having to kind of move it upwards manually, you can just select these keys, go to this button here, right click and say align to previous. 
what that means is that you get the same, but you get it all with one click. It's the same thing if you actually go align to next. So this is incredibly, incredibly useful. You can also do like the, the average between the keys. If you select a range, for example, it will grab all the information from all these keys. And if you just click the button without even right clicking, it will give you an average of all those keys and just flatten them all together. Super useful, I use it all the time. Now the next script here is auto smooth keyframe. And that actually works for everything. Uh, and this is actually the script that I'm using when I press my hotkey. And I think other tangent is slightly too aggressive. And this uh, MG Tools tangent is a little bit more forgiving and gives you much more of a linear connection between your two keys, which then allows you to see your animation as you intended instead of having overshoots from here and there. So that's basically uh, this section here. On the bottom of the tool, you have something that I use as well sometimes, and that is to shift keys. So if you actually kind of uh, select your keys, and here you, you see the one, and the one basically means how many keys would you like to be shifted forwards and back. So if you go plus and minus, it actually kind of uh, moves your keys forward one frame or backward one frame. Uh, this is a multiply, which is the same thing as adding a multiplication here, is to multiply that number. This is to divide that number. And this one is to clean up keys. And it's basically to snap frames in order for you not to get half keys. So you have this, these keys here that actually kind of uh, you don't really need. As you can see, you have extra keys. So if you select all of them and you kind of uh, click this, clean up frames, it will actually give you a clean curve without you having to individually go in and delete the keys. So that was MG Tools. Now let's move on to Animbot. Animbot, basically the only things I use for the graph editor is these tools here. And these are basically curves. You get the same thing as here, down here. But Alan, uh, the developer behind Animbot, developed about two, uh, three or four different tangents that you can use in order to kind of uh, just simplify your cleaning up of curves. The first one is actually merging the beginning and ends of your curves. And that's really useful because in games you're constantly looping things. The second one, it's actually the best guess tangent. So if you're batching animations, uh, sometimes you get something like this, that you get some spline tangents, but you also get linear tangents. It will give you a smooth tangent and you will actually kind of uh, gather all the tangents that you have here and basically tries to guess what will be the best kind of tangent to use in this key. Um, I use it sometimes just to kind of test out what I get. Um, the other one that I use a lot is Polish Tangent. And this is something that I just found recently with Animbot. And I feel like this is the best uh, tangent to polish your curves, better than the Auto Tangent and better than the Anim Tool tangent. So if you actually grab your curves and you actually press this polish tangent, normally you get something a bit cleaner. Um, I'm going to show you just the one thing that I use a lot on the old A tools. Since the new Animbot uh, doesn't have it, but Alan has told me that uh, hopefully in the future he's going to have it. So this is for A tools, which was this thing here on the bottom. I'm just going to unload those at the Animbot just to make sure that uh, things are as clean as possible. And A Tools has this feature that is auto jump to select key. This thing is really interesting. So I'm going to just uh, switch it off just to make sure that you guys see it. If I actually select a key normally in Maya on the graph editor, nothing really happened. So I can actually be working over here and you don't see what's going on on your screen. So in order to avoid this, so you don't have to constantly having to move the cursor to where you want. Ideally, you want to, as soon as you select the key, the cursor would actually move to where the key is. And that's exactly what this does, is auto jump to select key. So now that you will have that selected, it auto jumps to whatever I selected. So now it doesn't really matter if I select the key here to work on, or if I decided to, that this key is interesting and I need to see what it's doing. So now I know that I, if I do this and move things here, I know that I'm going to see at all times what I'm doing with the animation. See that? It's really, really, really useful. So as you're doing it, you kind of just go in and you always see your animation being updated at all times. And this is the one, one feature that I love about A Tools. And it's the only reason why I still have A Tools uh, installed is because of this one feature. Let's move on to the last thing I use, which is Red9. And for that, I need to load 
some motion capture. So let's do that. Okay, so now that we have the motion capture loaded, I have a lot of keys, which is exactly what I wanted to exemplify. I've talked many times here in the channel about the Red9 tools. That's super, super useful. I'm gonna show you how I use this tool called Interactive Curve Filter, which you can find here on the free pack. So this is available for everyone. And the way I use this, it's basically like if you want to minimize the amount of keys that you have to work on so let's say that your motion capture is really heavy at this point and you need to clean a lot of stuff instead of you having to clean up all of these keys by actually going in and starting to delete things because that's what you normally would do the beauty of this tool interactive curve tool is basically it does all the hard work for you so let me show you how I would go about cleaning up this bit. So it's the torso, so it's kind of like dirty, let's say, and you want to minimize this. So you select the curves or the keys that you want, and you actually make sure that you snap to frame so you don't get half keys. And then you actually kind of say resample the curve. And what you get is just a minimized version of the same curve with less keys. Obviously, the, the more you minimize it, the more your animation changes. So you can have just one, this is one key every frame, two keys every frame, three keys every frame, etc., etc. But the beauty of this is that you can still have the motion that you want and then you have it minimized in a way that you can then go in and start working with the motion. So normally I use this in chunks. So I minimize the keys to make sure that then I can actually go in and start pushing the poses. So I can actually kind of uh, do stuff like this like have more interesting timing in between the keys. This actually also brings me to another feature on the graph editor that you should always have on, which is view and show buffer curves. And you can see here, as I'm moving the curve, you have this gray curve here that is basically a snapshot of how your curve was originally. So when you're working with mocap, mocap is expensive, so you want to make sure that you don't destroy the mocap. Studios, companies have paid a lot of money to actually get the mocap to how it was. So before you do any changes, you have to make sure that you can you go to view and you go to show buffer curves. And this basically gives you the, the how the curve was before. And if you actually mess up your animation in, in any way, you have fail safe to go back to how the curve was before. In order for you to do that, you just go to swap buffer curve. And that basically gives you the curve as it was before on that specific range. You also can take a new snapshot of what it is. So turns out that you actually made the animation, you like where it is now, this is your new normal. So you actually grab the curve in its entirety or specific place of the curve. If you go to curves and you can go to buffer curve snapshot, this is going to be your new snapshot of the curve and your new failsafe for you to get back to if you mess up in any ways. So those things are really important to keep in mind as you work on your curves. Now, that basically wraps up all that I wanted to show you on the graph editor. There's a lot to chew on. There's a lot for you guys to try. That is basically uh, some of the tools that I use in order to streamline my graph editor. Okay, so we got to the end of another episode and I hope you guys found it useful. The graph editor is something that once you get started in animation, it's perhaps the thing that confuses you the most. I've met many animators that haven't used the graph editor for many years for either fear or not understanding it very well. No matter how much you delay the learning of the graph editor, it's going to be something that eventually you're going to have to use it. So better start early to understand what the graph editor is. As you go through your career in animation, the graph editor eventually will just click. It will just be like a switch. I get it now. If I actually use my graph editor after this point in my animation, my animation is gonna be better and it's not gonna destroy my animation. As long as you feed a lot of information onto your animation before you go into spline, as long as you're very organized, the graph editor can only enhance your workflow and make it better. So definitely something very, very useful. And I hope you guys find a little bit more use now that I give you guys some tips and tricks on how to actually kind of uh, make a workflow with the graph editor a little better. So that's all I had for you guys today. I hope you guys have an excellent week ahead of you. And as always, until then, stay well, stay safe. Peace.